YouTube, it's Dustin, and today we are going to look for some of these little shell fossils that I keep finding out in some of this material. Now, this is on my property, um, so don't need permission to be out here because I give myself permission. But uh, I came down here the other day and I found some really cool little shell fossils. So I decided to bring you guys down here, show you the spot, show you where it starts, where it gets good. And then uh, I figure we'll uh, look some of them up and try to figure out what we're looking at. I will show you what all I brought on um, this little adventure, even though I'm, I don't know, a thousand feet from uh, my main structure. So still brought stuff, you never know. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what I brought. This trip, I brought a pair of gloves. Um, you definitely want gloves, especially in the morning. Right now it's 8.30 in the morning and it's already like 80 degrees, 75 to 80 degrees. It's getting hot out here. But uh, you want to bring gloves because there are scorpions, there are snakes. Now the scorpions are pretty much nocturnal. You don't really see them during the daytime, but when it's early in the morning like this, you can turn over a rock and one be sitting right there and I, I don't feel like getting stung by a scorpion. Even though out here they won't kill you, it just hurts really bad and I don't feel like experiencing that. Of course, I brought a small shovel right here. I always bring my machete when I go hiking. It's just, I don't know, I feel stupid with it, but it's my personal defense against snakes or anything else. Uh, by snakes, I mean there are rattlesnakes out here. And of course I brought waters. I always bring water. We are in the desert. I did bring a bite extractor kit, a venom extractor kit, and my first aid kit. Better be safe than sorry. Alrighty, so this is the area <coughs> where I was hiking the other day, heading up to the house, and I noticed this area washes out. You can see where it's really green in there. It's a flood area. But I was like, you know what, let's poke around here. And I noticed on this side, there's lots of shale. You get entire shale patches. But in between the shale patches is this material. And it's everywhere. And there's little shell fossils throughout this stuff. Well, that one's not a good example, but oh, hey, check it out. There's a little crystal. That's a clactite crystal. Let me hold on to that guy. Uh, let's try to find a decent one that has nice little shell fossils in it. Let's get a little one in it. I want to find some decent ones to bring back. It gets better the further up we go. Here, that one's got some nice ones in it. You can see some nice shells in it. We'll hold on to that one. Oop, there you go. Right there. We'll hold on to that guy. Now, I do believe that these are snail shells that we're looking at, but uh, we'll figure it out when we start looking. I did find a website, not a website, a PDF file that somebody had written that describes the Texas fossils that you can find. Ooh, that's a good one. It's got a nice spiral to it. I'll grab you. So clearly this was once an area that lots of little sea snails had lived at. Now I do know the water out here resided 90 million to 100 million years ago. So I'm going to assume that these fossils are at least that old. I guess I didn't even need the shovel. I can pull this stuff out by hand. There's one right there on the edge of that. Nice little things inside of it. Looks like a worm. Let's find some better ones than that. A little spiral. I'll hang on to you too. Let me put these ones in the bag so I don't lose them because I have a habit of setting things down and not going back for it. So let me go put it on the backpack real fast. Even though I brought gloves, I'm just not using them. That's not smart. Let me get at least one of these on. All right. That patch 
is over here. Out here, this rock shows good weathering. I like seeing the way that they weather. So at one point, this rock would have been in the ground and that exposed. That way, wind was able to cut into it. All right, let me put you down. There's all kinds of them in here, all over. Now I do have some nice samples to bring up, so I'll leave that one in the ground for now. Let's come up a little bit higher here. So what I notice is that this stuff butts right up to the shale. It's just a shale next to it. And out here looking through this patch of shale, I didn't see anything really good. So it looks like this was the ocean bed, and this is where they all died and got covered up and fossilized, as they are everywhere. Oop, that one I might need a shovel for. Should walk out. All right. And then the patch of it just fades out. It's just that patch right down here for about, from here to my backpack, for about 50 feet. And only about 20 feet wide I can find it. Over there I haven't found any of it. Over there I haven't found any of it. It's just right in this area. So we've got a few specimens there. I think it would be a good idea to bring them up. Let's see if I can't pull a couple more real quick. Decent ones. I think we looked at those. Now I pretty much only like pulling out some specimens. Uh, the rest I like leaving in the ground so I can come back to it another time and look at it. I, I love the natural beauty of all of this stuff. <clears throat> I've always thoroughly enjoyed things like fossils, minerals, geology. Um, for those of you that do know me from other YouTube channels such as CoinOp, you'd know that I also love coins. Let me turn the camera. I enjoy anything that involves searching, looking for rarities, looking for treasure. Uh, that's why I've always enjoyed gold prospecting gem hunting, coin searching. Um, so this is just right up my alley. I absolutely love this. And I'm, as I said before, I'm learning as I go. So you guys are going to learn with me. If uh, you already know what you're looking at and talking about, let me know down in the comments what I'm looking at. Um, so we're going to bring this material up and I'm going to go to the computer and we're going to try to figure out what type of snail shells these are, what it is that we're looking at. Um, I do know this week I want to go up, there's a mountain over here I want to go up onto. Um, around that area we found some decent arrowheads and some uh, pottery. So I want to go up there and do an arrowhead hunt. I'll bring you guys with me. This was Apache territory so it's, I love finding the arrowheads and spear points from that. Uh, and then on top of that mountain, I was up there the other day and there's all kinds of big holes and uh i'm almost curious if there's seropod footprints which were like brontosaurus brachiosaurus the big 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 dinosaurs so i'm gonna film some of that and get your opinions because i i don't really know what their prints fully look like i pulled them up online and it looks similar and they're huge so i don't know but we'll go up and we'll take a look at that this week as well um i have been filming some of the animals around here so you'll start seeing videos on that as well um so there's that um, so let's bring this stuff up. See you in a few minutes. Okay, here we are at cleanup. Uh, let's zoom in on some of these. Take a look at a couple. That's one of my favorite ones so far. You can see the shell spiral in it. Now I think when we look these up, I'm going to focus on this style. Um, you can see these have all different kinds of things in them. The 
did wet them down so we can see them better. But I think I'm going to focus on that style because I have multiple examples of it. There's one there. And there. There's one here. on that and I did take some better photos with my well some photos with my camera but size reference for you uh, about an inch not even three quarters of an inch and then that guy right here is just shy of an inch as well so there we go there's the ones that we collected now let's go try and figure out what all we're looking at. Okay, well, my microphone is not working. I'm gonna have to address that later on. So I'm gonna use the computer's microphone. Sorry about that. But anyhow, um, I came across this book online called Texas Fossils, an amateur collector's handbook. And it was written by William H. Matthews III. So Texas Fossils and Amateur Collector's Handbook. And I found this to be very useful. So I'm gonna scroll down to what I believe we've come across. I believe it's on page 60. So in my opinion, especially by the diagram, uh, I would say we are in class Pelicipata. Um, now, Pelicipata is members of this cl class live exclusively in aquatic habitat, most abundant in marine environments. Now we know this area was under ocean until between 90 to 100 million years ago. Now Pelicipata includes such familiar saltwater forms as clams and oysters, as well as common freshwater mussel. Uh, Pelicipods range from the Cambrian to recent age, but more abundant in Mesozoic and Cenozoic rocks. So let's go up and take a look at those time periods that they just said. See if we can find one that fits our time period from when we know the water receded out here. So if you're, we are looking at this uh, little diagram they have of time frames. The Cambrian period was 100 million years ago. Uh, that's about when the water recited here. So these fossils, in my opinion, are around 100 million or so years old. If you look up at the Mesozoic time period, that's between 45 to 70 million years ago. And the Cezonic period was between 1 million and 44 million years ago. So it's pretty safe to say this is from the Cambrian period. So now we know it's over about 100 million years old, if not older. So let's try and find out what type of snail this was. Okay, well, looking at uh, the diagram that they have, there's two of them that I highlighted. At first, I thought might be one of these. I'm kind of siding with another one. There's the Turritella and the Vertagus. But if you look right next to the Turritella, there's the Lateris, and that kind of fits it as well. But I believe we're looking at one of these. So roughly 100 million years old, if not older, and either a Turritella shell, Vertagus shell, or Lateris shell is what we are looking at in these. So there you go. Definitely hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you are not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell. Leave me a comment. I will respond. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Oh.